Hello everyone, it's Kathy Champion and you're back with me in my on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and I am located in the beautiful state of North Carolina, but I can take care of your stamping needs no matter where you're located throughout the United States. So if you're currently not working with a demonstrator and you are interested in buying uh, any Stamping Up products or anything that you see in my videos, please reach out to me. I will be glad to send you a catalog catalog uh, if you're interested in shopping for me and um, I offer an incentive if you spend $50 or more uh, in my online store then you can uh, receive a free gift at the end of the month and that is $50 before shipping and tax so keep that in mind when when and if you place an order and I just want to let you know how much I appreciate your business and thanks once again for tuning in for this video this is another video in my series I didn't know I needed to know that we're going to center in. I did a card earlier this week um, where I used the watercolor pencils, but I thought I wanted to do something a little bit more in depth and try to teach you just how beautiful your coloring can be with just pencils. Now these come in two sets. This is assortment two, which is the smaller set, but there's also assortment... Um, there's assortment, let's see, I'm going to get it right. This is assortment two. This is assortment, let me, let me double check that. No, this is two, and this is uh, assortment one. Assortment one has a few more colors in it. Uh, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think it's 13 or 14 colors in this one. I know I didn't count right. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I was thinking it was 13 or 14 in this one. Maybe I took some out a while ago and didn't put them back in. But anyway, nevertheless, um, let me grab my catalog and I can show you what page that these pencils are on. And that way, if you decide that you want to grab these, um, you can pick them up. You also will need this um, blender pen. And these blender pens, it's just called a blender pen. You get three in a pack and you, you have two ends to it. Now the ends are identical but if you're if you're working with different colors, two different colors, you can use one side and then turn it and use the other side. So having the two ends is very important. And this has a solution in it that's like water, and it helps you blend your colors. And we're going to do some blending today, but let me go over here and let me find my colored pencils. Here they are. They're on page 126 in our annual catalog. And um, 13 pencils in assortment one and 10 pencils in assortment two. So this is assortment two and it's 1250. And the larger set that has the um, 13 pencils is um, $16. They are well worth the money. What a great way to have your colored pencils and have so many of the colors that match our card stocks and our um, inks and also the Stampin' Blends. Now, as you know, the Stampin' Blends are beautiful and they are one of my favorite ways to color, but they can be pricey at $9 per set. And, and per set, you get two, pen, two pens. So they are, they can be a little bit pricey, but they are absolutely wonderful. And once you get the set, then you only have to replace them as they, as they start to dry out from use over use. And I've had mine for over a year and I've only replaced a couple of colors. So they last a good long time. The blender pen is located on page 129 and the blender pens are $12 for a set of three and they are they work wonderful. So what I wanted to show you today is very simply um, I thought I would take a, a floral image so I grabbed the stamp from the hand pinned petals. I thought this would be a beautiful stamp, this one right here. 
to um, to use on your watercolor paper. Now I am using the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton paper. So you are getting a very high quality of watercolor paper with this. And what watercolor paper allows you to do, you can go over it and over it with water and it will not roll. You know a lot of the car regular card stocks, if you, even with a water-based marker, if you color too much, it will start to roll on you. The, the paper actually comes up and rolls away, um, just like any time paper gets wet. But watercolor paper is made especially for watercoloring and therefore you um, you have a greater success in um, being able to put down the water. Now the one thing you do want to remember and that is when you use uh, water on your ink you know how easy it is to clean the ink, your memento ink, off with your um, Simply Chamois just by putting some water on it and it, move, it takes the ink right off? Well, that is true with stamping. So anytime that you're using any type of, of water, be it um, uh, one of these blender pens, your uh, water, your water brushes, anything that you're using water with, do not use memento. It is not a good idea to use memento when you are um, using any type of water-based markers or just water or whatever because it will actually um, smudge the ink, it moves the ink, and you will have a muddy mess. So Stamping Up recommends you to use Stays On. Now, Stays On is a great ink, but to me Stays On has its place in my um, craft room. Hang on for me one second. As I was saying, um, Stazon is a solvent ink and I like to use Stazon when I am stamping on a non-porous surface, something that does not absorb the ink. Uh, paper will absorb ink. Um, so I, I limit my Stazon to plastic, acetate, um, glass, uh, metal, Anything that uh, that a ink will not uh, go into, I think would be the right thing to say. Uh, so this is something that I don't use it unless I absolutely have to. It's a great ink and it has its place in your craft room. But for me, and this is not a stamping up product, but I use my Versafine for watercoloring. Anytime that I am using colored pencils where I'm going to put water down to blend, I use the Versafine because this is a pigment ink and a pigment ink will not move with water because what a pigment ink does, it dyes the paper. I mean, it um, sits on top of the paper, but it cannot be moved with water. Alcohol will move a pigment ink. So never use this with your Stampin' Blends or any other type of alcohol marker. So what I'm going to do is I've got that flower mounted on a stamp block and I am going to go ahead and ink this up and I'm going to go in both directions to make sure I've got a good, um, a good amount of ink on here. And I am going to come down, I think I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm, I've got my stamp and pierce mat down so that I make sure that I have some cushion underneath this photopolymer stamp. I'm going to sit that down and I'm just going to press it into that mat and into that paper. You want to give it a good press. And you know, give it time enough for that ink to get really absorbed um, into the paper. Don't be in a hurry to take it off. And then I like to hold my stamp block in place and just give it a good rub. And then I'm going to lift it straight up. Beautiful image. And anytime that I'm using a pigment ink, because it does stain your stamps more than a dye ink, uh, even the black. So I have some stamp cleaner on my um, stamping scrub and I'm just going to clean that up really quick just like that. And even with that, you can see that it leaves a little bit of residue. I'm going to actually grab my Stampin' Mist and I am going to spray it directly on the stamp and then I'm going to go back in and work it. And then I'm going to go over to the dry side and I'm going to dry it off. 
that's the great thing about the stamp and scrub is and look it it's still stained as you can see it is a stain stamp but it is nice and clean now so now I'm going to take it off of the stamp and pierce mat because you don't want to color on a soft surface not with um not with your uh coloring colored pencils so what I'm going to do, and I've got a piece of paper underneath it, and the reason I have a piece of paper is because anytime that you're using your um, water, your um, blender pen, you want to make sure you don't have any color left on there from earlier. So I always make sure that I go, before I start, I just run it and I go around and around with it to make sure there's no color on any, either end of any side of it. So that looks nice and, and clean. So I'm going to be using a variety of these and I'm going to pull out my garden green and my granny apple green. And I do need to sharpen these just a little bit. So I'm going to grab my pencil sharpener. And I'm going to go in and you don't want to sharpen a whole lot. You just want to do a couple of turns in it. Just enough to get you a little point. I'm going to leave that out in case I need to do another one. But I'm going to go in with my darker green first. And the reason I'm going to do that is I want to just follow the lines in these leaves. Just put down a little bit of color. And I'm going to do a little bit around the edge of the leaf. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just put down some color. And the same thing here. Just come around like that. And then we're going to do the same thing. Oh, that one I think I'm going to leave because I want to do one or two of these leaves. And I think that single leaf will be the one to do. So I'm just going to come around here just like that. A little bit of color. Same thing here. And then a little bit around the edges. Like I said, you don't need to do a lot. Just a little bit. And a little bit right there. And a little bit here. Just like so. Now I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to put a little bit of this color. And you're going to notice, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take and put just some lines in here, just like that. Nothing spectacular, just some lines. Now this one is the one that I want to make it a lighter leaf, so I'm gonna go here, just like that, and then here and here. And you notice I'm not coloring, I'm just putting in some lines. Like that, like that, like that. And now we're going to take that water, that um, blender pen, and I'm just going to take off my end. And as you can see, you can see it's got color on the end of it where I've used it. And it, even rubbing it against my hand, you can't see. I can feel the wetness, but you can't really see it. But when you bring it to your piece and you start blending these colors, I want you to look at this magic. Isn't that pretty? And then here. And see how variegated that leaf looks? So pretty. And you can go back as much as you want and blend these colors. So I'm going to come down. I'm not going to mess with that one yet because I've got that dark green on here. And I want to clean this off before I go into that lighter leaf. And then here. 
And these leaves are kind of abstract anyway. If you notice, they're not totally um, attached to the flower. And we can just drag a little bit of that color up a little bit if you want to. Or you can leave it separated. Whatever your preference is. But see how beautiful that blends. Now I am going to come over here and just clean a little bit of that green off. And then I'm going to go in here and just kind of swoop that around. And then I'm going to color this. I'm not really coloring, I'm blending. Don't you love that effect? Is that not gorgeous? I love the fact that I can come in and I can play with colors. And you could add a darker color um, if you wanted your leaf to be darker. It is totally up to you how you want your leaves to look. That is the beauty of crafting and creating your own uh, pieces. So now I'm going to clean that brush again. And cleaning is so easy because you just got to just wrap that um, tip across your paper. Now I'm going to come back up to this light green. And I just want to leave a little bit of white space um, in that one. So in order to do that, that's exactly the way I'm going to work it. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous, gorgeous. And now we're going to come back in and we're going to do some coloring with our flowers. So I want to decide, I want to do a blue. And let's see, that's Pacific Point. I think my balmy blue is in the second grouping. Yeah, here's the balmy blue and that's a really pretty light blue. So I'm going to come in with some pretty heavy marks through here. And that will determine how dark your um, blue is, is how hard you press. So I'm going to come around and around. And again, I'm just staying on the inside of this flower with my darker um, penetration of color. Just like that. And then I'm going to clean my brush once more. And then I'm just going to start pushing this color up. And you almost just want to do little circles. Just like that. Just pull that color up and up. And I'm going to leave that center uh, uncolored because I want to come in with like a yellow or maybe an orange. And just see how beautiful that leaf, um, the petals on that flower come to life. And all we're doing is coloring. It almost gives you a watercolor effect. So if you haven't tried this technique and you are intimidated by coloring, this is a great way to get you used to um, blending without <clears throat> the expense of, um, of, of you know expensive alcohol markers. This is a nice economical way. And then once you master this, then you're definitely going to want to move on to some of the um, um, more expensive markers and things like that. But this is a great way to start out, especially if you only have, uh, you know, a very few um, dollars to work with. 
because you can pick up all of everything you need here for just a small amount of money, which I think is super great that we can we can do something like that. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to lay down right there in that center, really heavy Daffodil Delight. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to go ahead to my next flower. So I think these I want to do in a pink. So I'm going to start out with Mambo mel manga Melon Mambo. I'll get that color out in a minute. So again, I'm going to come in pretty heavy right in here. And then I'm going to come around the interior of my flower. Just like that. Then we're going to grab that watercolor marker again. Make sure you clean off your blue from the last thing that you colored. And I'm going to switch sides just because. I know I got the tip to it somewhere here. Oh, there it is. All right, so I'm going to. Start right here, little circular motions. Just like that. And I'm going to come back in with that, again, the Daffodil Delight. I might, I might just go ahead and sharpen this one, too. I've been using my colored pencils quite a bit lately. So, and again, I'm just going to circle right there in the center. off that yellow, I mean that pink, and I'm going to go in and just circle that around, isn't that beautiful, and we got it right here too, so while we're doing it, we're going to work this one, love it, you want to be careful when you're doing color on color, because you know yellow and blue is going to make green, so you don't want to let it overlap. And if you do get a little bit of color outside, just come back with your marker and then just blend that in just like that. So again, you can cover up and mask your boo-boos just like you can uh, with anything else. You just got to kind of jump on it when it happens. All right, I'm going to do the big flower. I think I want to use the purple for that. So gorgeous grape. Mm, right here. And there's our gorgeous grape. So I'm going to make the big one a pretty grape color. So again, I'm going to come in with pretty heavy right here. And then I'm going to go around my edges. And I just wanted to bring this to you um, to basically teach you uh, about watercolor pencil coloring because I think sometimes it's kind of lost. Um, we don't cover it quite enough. Now this one I want a little bit more intense color so I'm going to put a little bit there and a little bit here and maybe some right here just a little extra color so that when I come down with this marker, let's get that yellow off of there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to switch ends and I'm going to pull that purple just in circular motions. Mm 
nice circular motions helps you to get that color moving and it gives you just a beautiful effect so pretty and it really makes you feel like you're painting and I know, I know for myself I used to watch when I was a kid I watched Bob Ross on Saturdays and I would sit there in total amazement at what he could do with a paintbrush, a canvas, and a few paints on his palette. It absolutely blew my mind. And I always wanted to be artistic, but God didn't see fit to give me that, that um, particular um, talent. So he allowed me to be creative in other ways. So, and this was sort of my outlet by being able to do little things like this help me to feel creative and I absolutely love creating like this. So now I'm going to come back in with this beautiful yellow and I'm just going to put a swatch down like that and then this I'm going to color just around the edges and then I want to come back in with that flirty flamingo let's see that one's in this one so let's do flirty flamingo over here And then I'm going to do an orange. On this one back here. And we've got one more right there. And what color do we want to make him? I think we're going to do this one red. Why not? I love red. It's one of my favorite colors. And now we're going to take our water, our blender pen. I still want to call it a water marker, but it is a blender pen. And we're going to come in here with this red. And I'm just going to go around and around. I'm going to leave that center so we can pop a little bit of color in there. Now I'm going to go over here to the pink. And then I'm going to clean that off again, and we'll go to the coral, or the orange, I'm sorry. Just like that, and then we've got one more to do, and that's the yellow, and I am going to grab the other end, check and make sure it's clean, and it is, and then we are going to... Go around on that one and I think we're going to drop a red center in this one and how about a blue center in this one and let's do a yellow center in this one so again we're going to grab our marker and we're going to come in here and just hit that. Hit it there. Here. There. And had enough of blue on that that we could drop a little blue in there. Now look how gorgeous that turned out absolutely precious and all we have to do is grab our die I did pull my dies or at least I thought I did I 
I have been working on way too many projects lately all at once. So if you take this die right here, this is the outline die for this particular piece, and you can put it on here like that. And I like to use a piece of the um, post-it flags, and we can put this onto our die cut machine. And look how pretty that turned out. So pretty. And just think how gorgeous this is going to look on a black background. I'm just laying it on my Stampin' Scrub because I needed something dark to lay it on. But isn't that gorgeous? So this is a crash course in how to color with your colored pencils and a blender pen. So if you haven't tried this, give it a try. I'll have a link to all the colored pencils, the blender pen, along with this particular stamp set and die set, the hand pen paddles, and the pinned flower dies along with our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. So if you are interested in picking up any of these items, um, head over to my website. I would so appreciate your business. And I just thank you so much for uh, tuning in. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. That You will get more and more tips like this one today. Along the way, I try to add at least one time a week. I didn't know I needed to know that. And you can find that in a playlist under my videos. So thanks again so much for tuning in. May God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven. He is worthy. Until we craft again, may God bless and keep you always. Love you guys. Bye-bye.